Hey everybody, Doug Kenny here along with my coach and mentor, actor Andy McPhee, and we welcome Sean Anthony Robinson to Relentless and Unstoppable. How hey, are you doing, Sean. guys? Good day, guys. How's it going? Yeah, good, mate. And hello again, Doug. And uh, yes, we're running back-to-back -back interviews today because that's why people will see me in the same shirt in the same car. <laughs> my mobile <laughs> office. Um, so, Sean, uh, we've known each other for – actually, I can't even tell you. I don't know. It, how many years oh, I now? Can tell, I, can tell, I can tell you. I can tell, it's about – it's nearly 10 years. Yeah, I was just going to say I thought it would be very close to 10. Um, yeah. Yeah, working with COVID and then when we met. So, yeah, 10 years. Um, so, Doug, I'll let you start off. Yeah. With, so uh, getting into Sean's journey and then we'll dig a little deeper. Yeah, sounds good. So, Sean, uh, what just happened recently that made the news for you? Oh, well, recently I ended up uh, I ended up in Los Angeles for a um, for my world world premiere for my documentary I've been filming for the last five years. That's very cool. What's it about? It's actually about the journey of a creative to, to Hollywood. So it's uh, about um, how hard it actually can be, you know, going to Hollywood, not this, you know, clean cut cookie, cookie cut, ugh, clean cut cookie. Ugh. Anyway, it's not this clean cut film. It's this very raw. Cookie um, cutter, mate. Cookie cutter. <laughs> cookie cutter. Clean cut cookie, cookie cutter. Film. cutter. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you picked the you just picked the worst sentence to probably try with all them C's in it, mate. <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, oh, you monster on, me to help you with that. <laughs> hang on, let, let's see if we can all say we all got to take a turn and see who can say it the fastest. So, Doug, you go first. It's got to be clean cut cookie. See, I can't even do it now. Clean <laughs> cut cookie cutter, right? Clean cut cookie cutter. Go, Doug. Clean cut cookie cutter. Faster. Clean cut cookie cutter. Oh, geez. Clean cut Damn. cookie cutter. Clean, uh, cut, clean cookie cut cookie cutter. Clean cut cookie cutter. Okay, that's enough. You've started nonsense now, Sean. <laughs> uh, all right, mate. Anyway, keep going. So, yeah, it was, it was just basically, it was a very raw look at the industry, at what an actor actually goes through. And then the film just evolved into a lot more. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I, I remember being, well, well it, it was right at the beginning um, because you shared the idea with a lot of people. You shared it with myself and you came to LA and um, we won't spoil that part of the journey because it was a bit of a, a rough start when you first got there, but you stayed with me for a while. Then I shot back to Australia. Um, but there's a lot of people I know personally and nothing wrong with what they said at all. They, I tried to help out get some things moving people said no nah, no people don't want to watch that they'll never see it and went oh okay you, know, you can't make anyone wrong for that but how wrong were exactly. they you know they're not wrong they just didn't they weren't prepared to take the risk with your vision and you know like there was times there where you thought all of us thought oh boy this is this is going to be a bit tough but knowing i you, even thought that myself that's right yeah i know you had really tough times there but the thing that was really good sean and you know, we've worked together on set, we've coached and all that stuff, but there's very few people who um, are willing to risk and get up with that grind all the time without the, you know, the negative mind stopping you. You know, it's like that thing getting out of bed early at 5 a.m. to go to the gym. You can sit there for... A, four hours giving reasons not to you just got to get out of bed and, and go i hate getting out of bed this hour of the morning but it's going to lead to an outcome when i finish in 12 months my body will be better i'll be healthy i'll be eating better i'll be fit it's the same thing man you just you just never quit you have moments where you wanted to yeah 100 percent. and i think i think with um i mean you know how it got started was you know i mean the, the, the process of making something like this where is having people constantly tell you that you're not going to be able to do it. That just gives you more spark and it gives you more, more ownership of what you're actually doing. Because when you actually sit there and tell everybody, Hey, I'm doing this, 
basically the only person that's got to save you is yourself because you actually have to go, oh, I have to own this and get up and actually do it. So it's been tough because I basically shot myself in the foot at the start, but it was well worth it. That's great to hear. What was it like and how did you feel about traveling to L.A. for the first time? Oh. Well, Doug, I was 38 years of age and I'd never been on a plane before. So I was quite, you know, I thought, hey, I'm going to go. You've never been on a plane before. Hey, why not sit on a plane for 13 hours? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it, was, it was scary. It was really scary because I even said to the lady on the plane, do they have enough petrol to get up? Which, I mean, as in, do they have enough gas? And she sort of looked at me and said, yes, sir, they do. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's funny. I know you're actually quite scared on the plane. You're you're playing it down a bit. You're actually really quite scared. I was you? freaked out, mate. I, I was balling my eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really bad. I mean, and you'll see, see that, that in the film. Well, see, but that's the great part. Sean, um, is that you are willing to cry when you need to in front of whoever you you don't care, and it's that same thing that has driven you from a little kid when he was born to whatever experiences you have with your parents and the friends and people around you is this guy that's just kept going no matter what. Like it is, it is the Aussie battler story, you know. Um, I think. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. It's, 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 I'm not afraid to show who I am because the way I see it is if I want people to, if I want people to watch my stories and, and, and let me entertain them, I need them to know who the hell I am. And there's nothing wrong with showing a bit of vulnerability because when you actually, you know, open that, open yourself up and show that little bit of vulnerability, you get a little bit more respect from people. And people oh, want to know who you are more. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, I just got a, a vision then when you're talking. Um, it's I, I actually do see you becoming quite big with your dreams, whatever they will be, be it acting, singing. Um, we don't know, writing, no one knows, but you're on the journey. And I do see you being interviewed, uh, whether it be sooner than later or who knows, on these big uh, American talk shows at night time. Like I can see you being uh, on that celebrity sitting in that chair on those night shows being interviewed because you've just rocketed through to some other level in your journey, whatever that will be, you know, because you've already done it in Australia and that was something that was never going to happen in anyone's mind. It's gonna manif your I think it's, it's all about manifesting it. Yeah. You can't, you can't, like, I, I, one thing I've learned in the last, even in the last, so, okay, in the last two weeks, I've learned so much about what you, you should never expect anything, but then not, not expect anything. Know your worth, like, you know, knowing your worth and owning your own crap can open up so many doors if you just, you know, sort of know your own, know what's going on. If you know your own crap, and you mm. know your own, if you own your own bull crap, that opens yeah. a lot more doors for you as well. And I think that's what I've learned over the la in the last two weeks, even, you know, even some of the things that I never thought I'd have to learn, I've learned, which has opened more doors. Yeah. And what you said is really great about not, don't, don't be entitled. And um, I know this can, some people will agree with this or maybe not agree, I don't know, but not having that expectation because Sometimes if you put too much on the expectation, you're missing what you're meant to be doing now in those little steps. It doesn't mean don't have the expectation, but don't put all your energy into that and forget what you've got to do now. Um, and I think if there's a balance there, then it's great. You know, like I, when we first met on um, our famous TV show, uh, Houses or Fat Pizza, whichever it was, you know, um, yeah. and the first time we met on set, uh, we had a little conversation and it was, um, I don't know, I think it was something like, it was oh, man, you, 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 you're really good at this, you know, you should you should start doing some more stuff like this, you know, get yourself trained, you know. 
you tell me to do and go and do some more classes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and and, and do some more classes, mate. Yeah. yeah.